Aquatic animations. What sorts of things could we have? Hello and welcome back to Tricore Gaming with me, Fletcher. And in today's video, I want to go through five ideas for behavioral animations that our aquatic animals could have in Jurassic World Evolution 2. Before we get started, don't forget to give us a like and subscribe for more content from all of us at Triclaw Gaming. Right, let's get to discussing behavior. Currently, our lagoon animals do not do very much besides swimming and eating. Well, what's wrong with that, you might ask? The issue is that there is a whole range of behavior that these animals could display to make these creatures more realistic and more interesting to have in the parks. I'm going to go through some ideas that I've had and let me know in the comments which of these you like. So this might sound a bit strange, but hear me out. All aquatic reptiles need to come up to the surface to breathe. They aren't fish. Currently, however, our animals only happen to break the surface if their random roots take them there. A clear and distinctive breathing animation would have the animals clearly approach the surface and take a breath. It could even be joined by a puff of cloudy CO2 just for artistic effect. Different sized animals would spend different amounts of time underwater before breaths. It would be a simple animation that would would certainly add some much needed realism. Scratching is one of the most important behaviours that all aquatic animals do. It serves a variety of purposes. Scratching their skin sheds old skin, removing any parasites or creatures that might have latched on. This improves the overall health of the animal, but it also serves to remove anything that might compromise an animal's hydrodynamic performance. That is, how much drag the water surrounding them causes. Less drag means more efficient and faster swimming vital for predators. This is one of the reasons why the bumpy spiky Liprorodon model while looking cool makes no sense from the perspective of a sea animal. Animals could scratch by grinding themselves on the side of the lagoon or on the rocks and decorations that we place in the lagoon. Perhaps this could be linked to a new requirement that the habitats for these creatures have that there must be some extra decorative features for them to scratch on. Something theorised by paleontologists is that aquatic reptiles ate stones, known as gastroliths, to help grind up their food, but to help act as ballast against the air in their lungs. There are even fossil remains of plesiosaurs with gastroliths still in their stomachs, and in fact it's very consistent to find them in various types of elasmosaur fossil. Whether it was a unique behaviour to the elasmosaurs or something more common is difficult to know, but it does give us another unique behaviour we could see. The aquatic animal in question would go low to the lagoon floor or around our decoration items, sift through some sand to gain the stones with a nice little sand effect. Again, simple and just another animation to add realism. All animals need rest, even aquatic animals. Even fish rest in a way. Our lagoon based animals need this too. And in fact, this could link to new traits which our existing animals already have in the game, the nocturnal trait. Our animals would enter resting by floating near the surface, perhaps with their mouths or nostrils just above the surface to breathe, having a rest in the sun or in the dark. Not only would this allow the lagoon animals to have a new trait, but it would also mean that the lagoon viewing galleries, towers and other viewing structures we place would be able to view the animals on the surface. This one is the biggest area where I think the animals need improvements. Unique, social and aggressive animations that the animals will demonstrate with each other. And to make this interesting, let's do some examples for the Ichthyosaurus, Liprorodon, Elasmosaurus and Mosasaurus. I propose two animations for each, a social friendly one and a less than friendly one. For the Ichthyosaurs, the friendly animation could be that the animals form a small group or pairing and then take turns leaping out of the lagoon in a dolphin-like manner. This would add some much needed interest to what is a fairly boring animal. For the less friendly animation, I propose that the ichthyosaurs bump against each other in a sort of play-fighting manner. For the long-necked plesiosaurs, I would suggest some behaviours that are like giraffes. For the friendly social one, each animal would bring their heads and necks out of the water like what's been seen in prehistoric planet, 
displaying to each other. For the less friendly animation, I propose a sort of neck headbutting contest like giraffes do, using their necks to batter their opponent. It doesn't have to be excessive, just a little aggressive. For the Librorodon, I've gone to walking with dinosaurs for inspiration and to whales. The friendly animation between them would be two Librorodon using their flippers above the surface like whales to communicate. For the aggressive posture, I would have the two animals circle each other before one attempts to bite the other's tail or flipper, like what we see in Walking with Dinosaurs. The Mosasaur, our biggest animal, would also have two. The first would again be based on whales, and that is breaching. Whales and sharks breach the surface, usually while hunting, although whales jump and breach for fun too. I imagine that the Mosasaurus will do the same, jumping slightly out of the water as a display to the other, but will also practice those shark pouncing jumps. For the aggressive animation, I'd have the Mosasaurs collide, perhaps with one ramming the other in a sort of T attack or side on side as an aggressive display. Finally, I would add one animation to all of the animals, and that is interacting with the viewing gallery windows. All the aquatic animals would lightly bump their noses against the glass curious about those inside. There could even be a little added jeopardy here, as if the animal has lower enclosure happiness, the bumps might be more like hits, either damaging the gallery or the animal. So that was five possible animation types that our lagoon animals could have to improve them. Let me know in the comments what animations you'd like the animals to have, or which of mine are your favourites. Don't forget to give us a like and subscribe if you're new here, and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, stay safe and goodbye.